Do any of these DeWalt replacement batteries work as well as the DeWalt batteries themselves? Let's find out. Alrighty guys, I have a good deal of DeWalt cordless tools and I've been in the market for replacement batteries. Now in doing my research for replacement batteries, I have found a good deal of aftermarket batteries, some may call them knockoffs, that are not manufactured by DeWalt. The question is, are these aftermarket batteries as good or better than the original DeWalt batteries? Today's testing will be an attempt to answer that question. I'd like to note that this video and its structure are highly influenced by the Project Farm channel. I have used his product videos in the past to intelligently purchase tools, and I guarantee that you will not be disappointed if you check out his channel. And with that, let's get into the testing. In the first test, we will be using the DeWalt DCBL720P1 to get some runtime results for each of these batteries. The blower came with a 5 amp hour battery from DeWalt, and I will be using this 5 amp hour battery along with some other new and used DeWalt batteries to get a baseline. To get an idea of the airspeed produced by each of these batteries, we will be using a wind gauge, which will be clamped to the table in one stationary location for every test. We will also be charging all of the batteries to their full charge using my current DeWalt chargers. The first aftermarket battery that we will be testing today will be the Waitley, which comes in at $36. All of the aftermarket batteries that we are testing today will be rated for 6 amp hours. As you can see, the test rig is fairly simple. We have the blower strapped down to the table with the airspeed meter in front of it. Neither of these two items will be moved throughout the entire duration of the blower testing. So we insert the battery into the blower, depress the trigger all the way, and lock the trigger in the full depressed location. We then run the blower until the battery dies. Note that as the Waitley battery dies, the degradation of the airspeed is very abrupt, and this signature holds true for all the batteries we tested. The Waitley put up a score of 21 minutes in this first test. The next contestants come from Topbat, which can be purchased in a 2-pack. This results in a per battery price of $26. Since I have two of these batteries, I will be labeling one with A and the other with a B. This is so that we can keep track of them during a testing and see if they have different performance even though they come from the same manufacturer. We will be incorporating the same A and B labeling technique when testing the Power Extra batteries which also come in a 2-pack later on in the video. It was nice to see that in both of these 2-packs tested, the A and B batteries had similar results. This shows that the manufacturing process for these batteries are uniform and repeatable. Both the A and B top bat batteries came in at around 17 minutes. The next battery that we will be testing is the Pow Tree, which is $33. This by far is the most disappointing battery of the bunch. I was not even able to get a full charge with either of my chargers on this battery. Within a few minutes of putting this battery on the charger, the charger would start flashing the hot and cold delay light. At no point in time were we able to get a full charge on this battery. I'm not exactly sure what the issue was in this scenario, but it does not bode well for the POW tree test. I decided to test this battery anyway, so I charged it overnight. Even with a full night of charging, the battery only showed that it had two thirds of its charge. Like you would expect, this battery was a very low performer and only ran for about 6 minutes in the blower test. Adding to the strangeness of this battery, I removed the battery after the blower test to see how much of the battery's charge was left. By pressing the indicator lights, it showed that I still had 2 thirds of the battery life left. The results were odd and I would not advise buying this battery for these reasons. The next pair of batteries that we will be testing come from Power Extra, and the per battery cost is $33. Like the top bat batteries, these come in a 2-pack. We will be labeling them A and B for our testing. The Power Extra A and B pair compare very well to each other, just like the top bat batteries did. In the blower test, the Power Extra A battery has a 15.7 minute time, and the B battery had a 16.2 minute time. These times were both lower than the top bat pair and the Waitley battery. The next batteries we will be testing are the used DeWalt batteries. One is a 5 amp hour battery that came with my blower, and the other is a 2.5 amp hour battery that came with my drill and impact driver. One thing that I think we should notice here is that the DeWalt 5 amp hour battery seems to have the same dimensions as the aftermarket 6 amp hour batteries do. It is my hunch that all of these 6 amp hour batteries are really the equivalent to a DeWalt 5 amp hour battery. I think this will be more prevalent 
when we show the 6 amp hour battery in the next test. The 5 amp hour battery used had a runtime of 17 minutes and the used 2.5 amp hour battery had a time of 6 minutes. As you can see here, the $136 6 amp hour DeWalt battery is much larger than all of the aftermarket batteries that we have tested. Apparently, when it comes to lithium ion batteries, size does matter. This new DeWalt 6 amp hour battery made in Korea performs significantly better than all of the aftermarket batteries with a blower runtime of 24.9 minutes. So here is the graph performance of all of the batteries in the blower runtime test. The DeWalt batteries are colored in yellow on this graph. One thing to note here is that the Waitley aftermarket battery not only outperformed all the other aftermarket batteries in the test, but it also outperformed the used 5 amp hour battery from DeWalt. When it comes to airspeed, the spread in performance was fairly close. Note the Y axis only has a spread of around 4.5 miles per hour. However, that being said, the Power Extra batteries both consistently performed a little bit weaker in miles per hour than the rest of the pack. In an attempt to find the best value batteries, we calculated the dollar per runtime. The batteries towards the left side of this chart are better performers in this metric. While this may not tell you which of the aftermarket batteries were the best, since they are so close together, I think it does indicate that the expensive DeWalt battery may not be worth it for the average user. As you saw, I measured each of these batteries. This chart shows the difference in thickness between the batteries tested. I think this is probably a good indication of which amp hour these batteries really are. Note that all of the aftermarket batteries had approximately the same thickness dimension as our used 5 amp hour DeWalt battery, and the new DeWalt 6 amp hour battery was much larger. Using the three DeWalt batteries that we have in our testing, we will plot runtime versus DeWalt amp hours. We have a 2.5, a, a 5, and a 6 amp hour battery from DeWalt. The R squared of this correlation was 0.98, which is pretty darn good. Using this trend line, we can calculate what the approximate DeWalt equivalent amp hours are for each of the aftermarket batteries. In example, the Waitley battery has a runtime of 21 minutes, which correlates to a 5.4 DeWalt amp hour equivalent. This bar graph shows how all of the aftermarket batteries stack up on an equivalent DeWalt amp hour basis. The Waitley battery is the best performer when looking at this metric. Alrighty guys, that was the air test. Now we're gonna move on to the grinding test, but before we do that, we need to suit up. For our next test, we will be using these cutoff wheels and the DeWalt angle grinder. Each battery test will start off with a new disc and the clock will be stopped in between disc changes. The batteries will be graded on total runtime and the number of discs they eat through when cutting a piece of 3 quarters of an inch rebar. We will be testing the batteries in the same order, so our first test will be the $36 Waitley battery. One thing to note with the angle grinder testing is that I think it put a much larger load on the batteries than the blower did. I'm also fairly sure many of these batteries are designed to shut down once a certain temperature or workload is reached. In the grinder test, the Waitley battery was able to achieve a time of 3 minutes and 56 seconds before depressing the trigger on the grinder would no longer turn the wheel. I do think it is also worth noting that this was the only aftermarket battery which saw a decreased output towards the end of testing, but continued to turn the wheel. This is in contrast to all the other batteries that we will see coming up, which just stopped abruptly. The next battery up is the top bat. I lost the footage for the A top bat battery. However, the results basically are identical with the B labeled battery. The top bat had a grinder runtime of 48 seconds. This is around the time I realized how much more demanding the grinder was on the batteries than the blower. The next battery tested was the POW tree. Like I mentioned before, this battery would not fully charge, and this test is more of a courtesy since a good performance was not expected. This battery only lasted 34 seconds before shutting off the power to the grinder. After the POW tree, we tested the Power Extra batteries. The A Power Extra put up a time of 3 minutes and 21 seconds, which was close to the Waitley and significantly better than the top bat. 
the Power Extra B battery put up a lower time of 2.3 minutes. This is the largest variation seen between battery pairs in the testing. Interestingly enough, both of these batteries eroded approximately the same diameter of the cutting disc. The 5 amp hour battery from DeWalt put in an excellent performance of 4.4 minutes. The time was better than all of the aftermarket batteries and I think it speaks to DeWalt's high load performance. The used 5 amp hour DeWalt actually was able to make it through one and a half cutting disc, which was significantly more than the aftermarket batteries. The 2.5 amp hour used DeWalt battery put up a runtime of 2 minutes and 5 seconds, which is hilariously higher or close to some of the much larger amp hour rated aftermarket batteries. This again is a testament to the grit of these DeWalt batteries. Lastly, we have the new $136 DeWalt 6 amp hour battery. Now I knew this battery would outperform the other batteries, but I wasn't quite prepared for the magnitude of that outperformance. The differential and runtime between this battery and the rest of the pack was so great that I ended up running this test twice to verify it wasn't a fluke. While I'm only showing one of the tests here, I ran one iteration at the start of the grinding testing and the second iteration at the end of the grinder testing. The results of these two tests were identical. The 6 hour DeWalt battery had a runtime of 12.1 minutes and was able to make it through 5 of the cutoff disc. I laid out all of the used cutout disc next to their respective battery here. Other than the POW tree, the worst performer was the blue top bat batteries. The Power Extra batteries and the Waitley battery were the best aftermarket performers when it comes to the cutoff disc erosion. The graph of grinder runtime performance shows a very similar story. As you can see, the DeWalt batteries outperform the aftermarket batteries in this test and are clearly designed to handle the higher on-demand loads required with an angle grinder. The aftermarket batteries that perform the best in runtime were the Waitley and the Power Extra. While the Waitley put up a higher runtime, a portion of that runtime was at a reduced RPM, which is obvious when looking at the amount of the cutoff disc used by the Waitley versus the Power Extra. The dollar per runtime on the higher power output grinder test paints a different picture than the blower test. The $136 DeWalt battery is much more economically competitive in tasks that require a high on-demand power output. So that's how the testing shook out. If you're looking for a battery that can handle high power output on demand, then the expensive DeWalt battery is your best option. If you're looking for a lower duty battery that can handle drilling and impact operations or to be used in tools like the blower, then I would highly recommend looking at the Waitley. It is a good cheap option and I feel like I will pick up a couple of these to have around the shop. But enough about my opinions, what did you think about these tests? Let me know in the comments below along with any other thoughts you may have on these testing procedures. If you're interested in purchasing any of these batteries and you found this video helpful in making your decision, I'll make sure to put my affiliate links in the description below. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel if you want to be notified of more interesting and entertaining videos related to tools and knife making in the future. With that, I'll catch you all on the flip side.